Thanks, David. I'm Daryl Howe, Dairy Farm from Northern Victoria and Australian Dairy Farmers. Thanks, John, for your presentation. I'm pleased to see it warts and all. It's what we need. My question to Phil is, I'm pleased to see that you acknowledged through your presentation the pain and the hurt at, um, in the regions. My challenge is that we need to hear those same uh, frank um, points being made by all your staff when they go out and present. Because it appears to me and some others that the NDBA is seen as the cheerleader for the environment and the government promoting the plan rather than being objective and independent and giving us both sides of the story all the time. Um, thanks. Is this on? Yeah. Um, thanks for the question, Daryl. And uh, look, um, I'll see what we can do about that. Uh, <laughs> We've got to be that objective voice. Uh, we've got to be able to tell it like it is, and just as John's um, sort of told it like it is, I guess that's what we'd like to be able to, to do as well. Um, ultimately, that's the role of the MDBA is to feed back to governments what are the what's really happening out there. And uh, um, I think it's a bit it's a bit hard. But it's early stages in terms of the economics, um, as John's already pointed out, and uh, also the, the environment, as David's pointed out, but I think we've got to do that if we're actually going to be fair dinkum and governments are in a position to make informed decisions. So I'd, I'd take that on board, your comment on board, uh, absolutely. And I'd have to say that in my tripping around the basin very sort of quickly in the first few uh, weeks, that was a really quite a dominant uh, uh, f um, point that was made to me, that we, we're not... Um, Listening, we're not consulting, um, and David's uh, talked about engagement a lot as well, and I think that's what we've really got to work harder on, is trying to better engage, recognising the size of the basin and the size of our staff. Thanks. Right, uh, thanks, Daryl. Thanks, uh, Phil. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah, um, uh, my name's David Moore. I've got a, a long uh, family uh, history um, in the Macquarie Valley. My question is about, uh, to David, uh, perhaps. David, uh, you, you said... Uh, you said uh, you, part of the role or your uh, role was to, to ensure that uh, you maintained or the uh, ecosystem, um, the, or the current ecosystem, or at least uh, uh, tried to restore it. I noticed in one of your priorities with the Macquarie Marshes, which is a marsh is a, defined as a place where you have intermittent uh, wetting and drying cycles, as far as I'm aware. So you've got the Macquarie Marsh, but one of your priorities was to establish wetland corridors in the Macquarie Marsh. I'm just wondering why you would establish a wetland in a defined marsh, and is that not modifying the ecosystem rather than maintaining it? Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, David. Um, just some general comments maybe before specific. Um, the uh, observation I would make about uh, naturalness is one that I tried to make in the presentation that what we're doing is managing to um, a series of mandated targets or outcomes. Um, I'm not aware of any, uh, across the entire basin, I'm not aware of any wilderness or pristine uh, environments. You, you're operating in a changed uh, and regulated system almost everywhere. So uh, there are therefore a series of conscious decisions about what you're managing to uh, the Macquarie Marshes is a Ramsar site. It's got an ecological character uh, that has been developed or um, identified, uh, and we're attempting to manage to that. I'm not aware of the specific concern you're raising about wetland corridors. That will come out of the uh, New South Wales Government Agency's management program for the marshes. But I do know that we struggle uh, in the marshes, as we do in other places, in getting um, environmental water in the right place at the right time. Uh, so we've been very successful at getting it into parts of the Macquarie Marsh um, and not in other parts. And I think the corridors that you're referring to have been um, partly a management response to ensure that um, if we can't get water evenly spread throughout the marshes at the right time, that we are still allowing uh, the, the uh, fauna at least to move uh, throughout the area. Okay. Uh, so, thanks, uh, David and David. Uh, are there any other questions that people want to, to raise or comments? No, I can't see anyone. Jump up and down if I can't see you. No, OK. Well, look, I think that, um, that then allows us to conclude the session. Thanks very much. Uh, 
as you will no doubt have picked up, uh, water is a, is a challenging uh, area. Uh, to get the politics of water, I'll just make two quotes uh, from uh, important historical uh, figures. Um, you know, by the name of W.C. Fields and other uh, people such as that, uh, who I think once said that uh, uh, whiskey is for drinking and water is for fighting over. Uh, and then to understand often the politics uh, of uh, water, and this is before even uh, government intervention, uh, there's an old saying which says that uh, everybody upstream of me is a thief and everybody downstream of me is a whinger. Uh, and so that tends to define that tends to define the politics. It's an inherently fraught uh, area. Uh, one thing which I've been quite pleased about, uh, uh, notwithstanding the fraught nature of some of this, is that there there is quite deep partnership in some places, including with John, for example, in running the systems. And there are better ways uh, through uh, than. Uh, uh, just, uh, you know, the government here, I'm from the government, we're here to help you and I think it's very important that David is telling stories uh, about localism. He now has, I think, six, is it? And I think you'd like to have more people employed out in the basin. Uh, and uh, we're working very closely with John and his colleagues and uh, some of the other state uh, our colleagues as well. Uh, I'd also like to thank Nicola in particular. Uh, it's, uh, it's important uh, to uh, get the good stories out of Tasmania. There's some absolutely terrific stuff uh, happening uh, down there and uh, I only wish in some respects that uh, uh, we on the mainland, and here I'm using a collective we, uh, we're in some respects just um, even a bit as good as you guys down uh, in Tasmania and I think, I think, I think uh, things might be uh, a bit easier but uh, we're not starting with, uh, uh, with a clean sheet of paper up here in the Murray-Darling Basin. It's something which has been fought over uh, for uh, more than 120 years uh, now. Some of this stuff had its roots back in uh, the pre-Federation debates. Uh, uh, so I'm not expecting all of this to be finally solved by 2024 by any means. Uh, it's just as well we'll leave uh, uh, something for our successors um, and grandchildren to do, but uh, I'd, I'd prefer actually that it was a, it was a uh, more of a positive uh, heritage than sort of a continuing to manage in a fraught um, environment. But um, with that, I'll, um, I'll bring the session to a close. Thank you very much for attending and thank you to the panel members.